There were eyewitnesses of the event. Otar and his companion escaped, bearing with them the shards of Nazil. The tale mentions a young man who survived the slaughter. He was Lendur's esquire, named Estelmo, and was one of the last to fall, but was stunned by a club and was not slain, and was found alive under Elendor's body. He heard the words of Isildur and Elendor at their parting. There were rescuers who came on the scene too late, but in time to disturb the orcs and prevent their mutilation of the bodies. For there were certain woodmen who got news to Thranduil by runners, and also themselves gathered a force to ambush the orcs, of which they got wind and scattered. For though victorious, their losses had been great, and almost all of the great orcs had fallen. They attempted no such attack again for long years after. The story of the last hours of Isildur and his death was due to surmise, but well founded. The legend in its full form was not composed until the reign of Elisar in the Fourth Age, when other evidence was discovered. Up to then it had been known, firstly, that Isildur had the ring and had fled towards the river. Secondly, that his mail, helm, shield, and great sword, but nothing else, had been found on the bank not far above the gladden fields. Thirdly, that the orcs had left watchers on the west bank armed with bows to intercept any who might escape the battle and flee to the river, for traces of their camps were found, one close to the borders of the gladden fields. And fourthly, that Isildur and the ring separately or together must have been lost in the river. For if Isildur had reached the west shore wearing the ring, he should have eluded the watch, and so hardy a man of great endurance could not have failed to come then to Lorien or Moria before he found it. Though it was a long journey, each of the Dunedain carried in a sealed wallet on his belt a small file of cordial and wafers of a waybread that would sustain life in him for many days. Not indeed the Miravor or the Lembus of the Eldar, but like them, for the medicine and the arts of Numenor were potent and not yet forgotten. No belt or wallet was among the gear discarded by Isildur. Long afterwards, as the third age of the Elvish world waned and the War of the Ring approached, it was revealed to the Council of Elrond that the Ring had been found, sunk near the edge of the Gladden Fields, and close to the western bank, though no trace of Isildur's body was ever discovered. They were also then aware that Saruman had been secretly searching in the same region, but though he had not found the ring, which had long before been carried off, they did not yet know what else he might have discovered. But King Elisar, when he was crowned in Gondor, began the reordering of his realm, and one of his first tasks was the restoration of Orthanc, where he proposed to set up again the Palantir recovered from Saruman. Then all the secrets of the tower were searched, many things of worth were found, jewels and heirlooms of Eor, filched from Ederas by the agency of Wormtongue during King Theoden's decline, and other such things more ancient and beautiful, from mounds and tombs far and wide. Saruman in his degradation had become not a dragon, but a jackdaw, at last behind a hidden door that they could not have found or opened had not Elisar had the aid of Gimli the Dwarf, a steel closet was revealed. Maybe it had been intended to receive the ring, but it was almost bare. In a casket on a high shelf, two things were laid. One was a small case of gold, attached to a fine chain. It was empty and bore no letter or token, but beyond all doubt it had once borne the ring about Isildur's neck. Next to it lay a treasure without price, long mourned as lost for ever. The Elendilmir itself the white star of elvish crystal upon a fillet of mithril, that had descended from Selmarion to Elendil, and had been taken by him as the token of royalty in the North Kingdom. Every king and the chieftains that followed him then in Arnor had borne the Elendilmere, down even to Elisar himself. But though it was a jewel of great beauty, made by the elven smiths in Emladris for Valandil, Isildur's son, it had not the ancientry nor potency of the one that had been lost when Isildur fled into the dark and came back no more.
Elisar took it up with reverence, and when he returned to the north and took up again the full kingship of Arnor, Arwen bound it upon his brow, and men were silent in amaze to see its splendor. But Elisar did not again imperil it, and wore it only on high days in the north kingdom. Otherwise, when in kingly raiment, he bore the Elendilmere which had descended to him. And this also is a thing of reverence, he said, and above my worth, forty heads have worn it before. When men considered this secret hoard more closely, they were dismayed, for it seemed to them that these things, and certainly the Elendilmere, could not have been found unless they had been upon Isildur's body when he sank. But if that had been in deep water of strong flow, they would in time have been swept far away. Therefore Isildur must have fallen not into the deep stream, but into shallow water no more than shoulder high. Why then, though an age had passed, were there no traces of his bones? Had Saruman found them, and scorned them, burned them with dishonour in one of his furnaces, if that were so, it was a shameful deed, but not his worst.